Joining me now via Skype is Peter Matthews for more on this latest development with Donald Trump. Peter, no, we spoke about this same area not so long ago. What do you make of this? Uh, it, it looks, from the surface of things, to be avoiding scrutiny, essentially. Uh, well, Giuliani is uh, making comments that don't seem to have a lot of basis. I mean, to say that uh, Michael Cohen's a pathological liar, I mean, the fact is that he must have lied in the past, but when he's speaking to these uh, investigators, he's not lying then, and they must have corroborating evidence to go in and, and uh, find, make claims about Cohen. So I think Giuliani is in a desperate situation where he's trying to defend the president at any cost at all. He's calling him names instead. He's calling Cohen names instead of addressing the real issue of whether or not there is, uh, the investigators are on the track on something here. So we'll, we have to wait and see what happens here. Is that, uh, I mean, it, it sounds like a logical attack, though, I guess, from the Trump team when you consider someone who was Donald Trump's lawyer and presumably shouldn't have just been doing whatever he said, for one thing, and maintaining his own sense of ethics, that it's an understandable path to go down. How is Michael Cohen being viewed right now by, I suppose, the US public and, more importantly, the Republican Party? Well, the Republican Party, of course, is completely against Cohen. Most of the people in the Republican Party is, look at him as a deceiver and a liar, and et cetera. But the population as a whole, I think over half, for sure over half, a good, good amount over half, uh, believes that the president himself has been not forthright and maybe being lying himself on certain, on, regarding this, especially the collusion uh, accusations about Russian collusion. But let me just make another point here, and that is that when uh, Giuliani came out and said that the hush money was paid, uh, not so much for the election purposes, but instead to prevent mm -hmm. um, Mr. Trump's family from having, you know, emotional distress, and therefore it's not considered a campaign contribution. That's not quite accurate, because the fact is that it was paid during October, the time when the election was about to take place. Why wasn't it paid much earlier if he was trying to avoid family distress? That has to be asked as well. So, yeah, Giuliani's trying to do his job as a lawyer for the president, that's for sure. Have we ever heard Donald Trump get up and say that? Because he's someone who still, you know, portrays himself as somewhat of a family man. You'd think even that would damage him quite a lot with Republican voters. It would, normally speaking. But in this case, this president has a very strong base among, you know, at least two different group, factions or groups in his base. One of them, a very important one, is the evangelical Christians, many of whom, probably the most of whom, believe that he's a defender of their policy issues and their situation, the right to practice their faith. For example, they like the fact that he's totally pro-life on abortion, anti-choice, and he's vowed to get some kind of uh, action on that. Uh, he's also brought in judges in the Supreme Court that are totally pro-life or anti-choice. That's the, the fundamentalists, more evangelical Christians believe, they look, this man's defending our faith. So even though he's not perfect in his own way, possibly even as being seen as someone who's not sticking to a fundamentalist message himself in his life, he's still trying, they say. They give him a pass on it. That's about 40 percent of Republican primary voters are evangelical Christians. The other group of people, of course, are those who, in the rural areas and small towns, have voted for him because they were just fed up with not having a future. Mm. You know, the, the previous administration didn't really take care of the economic situation well enough. Uh, the recovery wasn't that strong since 2009. And they became desperate and voted for Donald Trump. He promised them a lot of jobs. and make America great again, so that's why they, they support him. It's only about 35 to 40 percent of the population that supports him, though, and that may not be enough to win re-election. Peter, just finally as well on this, yet again the Supreme Court comes into things potentially. We don't really have a definitive ruling on whether or not Donald Trump can be subpoenaed to give testimony. That's right. It's never been settled, and the Supreme Court will have to decide that. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, it's, since it's never happened before, there's never been a precedent for a president being subpoenaed to come in and give testimony in a criminal matter. Uh, in a civil matter, it was. The President Clinton was subpoenaed, and he did testify in, in front of a uh, you know, grand jury. And so that was different. This is a criminal probe, and no one's been subpoenaed yet for that. It depends on what the Supreme Court ultimately says. Can the president be someone who's above the law or has to have special circumstances because he's running the country at the time? It will be a distraction for him to be subpoenaed. Or is he just like any other citizen, an American citizen who is under the law, and therefore he should be able to be subpoenaed to answer questions about any kind of malfeasance, whether it be regarding impeachment or indictment? That has to be settled yet, though. The court will decide that. Peter Matthews, uh, thank you for your time, of course. Um, and, uh, look, we'll chat soon on these uh, latest developments. I sense this is uh, not going anywhere anytime soon. OK, thank you.